Hey, I'm Jason Peacock from Jason Talks About Games on YouTube. Today joining me is my son Hayden, and we're going to take a look at a deck building adventure game, Clank. Now this game is about adventurers starting at the top of a castle, moving down the castle, and into the depths, trying to grab an artifact and make it out alive before the big dragon barbecues you. Now, you're going to have a 10 card starting hand, like most deck builders, everybody's hand starts the same. Then there's going to be a trade row where you can buy cards available. As they get bought, they get replaced by the deck. There's also cards that come standard with every game you can buy, basic action cards. There's one that's simply straight up points, there's one that gives you a bit of move and a bit of um, skill to spend on buying new cards. And then there's one that gives you a little bit of fight and a little bit of skill to spend on cards. Skill is the currency you use to buy cards up front, not gold which you can use to buy things from the market. So you're using your little boot icons here to go down into the dungeon, pick up an artifact or go to the market and buy some items that are going to help you out. There's these little monkey idols you can get that are straight up points. There's also a dragon that may show up from time to time. Now, this doesn't revolutionize anything in the deck building genre. It's pretty standard. You get your five cards, you flop them down, you do what's on the cards. You take a game like Star Realms, however, right, which you played once with me, Star Realms, <clears throat> the entire decision-making process, at least 95% of it, is simply what cards you buy. And then your deck is just fighting another person's deck. You're just <clears throat> flopping down your cards, you're doing what the card says. There's very little decision-making in Star Realms. It's, uh, oh, do I, do I blow up your base or do I hit you with the damage, right? It's really what cards you buy and, and you hope the synergy of what you buy beats the other person's deck. Clank opens up the decision making quite a bit because there's multiple pathways you can be walked down. Do you go this way? Do you go that way? Do you grab a cheap artifact near the surface or do you press your luck and try and get that big beautiful guy at the very bottom? So I really like that. I like that the decision making has been brought out of simply what card do I buy? Which way do I go? That's a big thing. Do I go to the market and, and get a backpack so maybe I can grab a second item? You haven't played a lot of deck builders, Hayden. You've played Xenoshift, which is a cooperative deck builder, and you've played Star Realms one time, I think. I don't know how much you remember that. What are your thoughts on deck building? Um, deck building, I haven't done it much, but I do really like deck building games. What do you like about them? How um, you have five cards in your hand and sometimes you're like, oh, what do I do with this card sometimes? Yeah. And as well, in Clank, there are stumbles which give you plus one Clank. Ah, Clank, that's something we didn't really talk about it. Clank is the noise that you make while you're delving through the dungeon, and it's represented by these cubes, a personal supply of cubes in your color. There's going to be cards. Uh, the stumble card he was talking about, everybody starts with two of them. This card simply makes you add Clank to the, the little Clank area. Now, I said that this game doesn't do anything to revolutionize the deck building, but I really like the way they've got the hit points and the drag, and I think that is a unique integration into the deck building. You see, if a card gets flipped up in a trade row um, when they get replaced after being bought, if there's a dragon symbol on them, then you grab up everybody's clank, throw it into a bag with the 24 neutral dragon cubes and then depending on where the dragon's at um, in intensity level this moves up based on each artifact that's grabbed and and some of these secrets you can get uh, which can move up the track as well say it's uh, four cubes we draw four cubes out of the bag two of them are black they're the dragon's color they just get removed from the bag one's red one's blue the red one goes on the red damage spot the blue one goes on the blue damage spot you've got 10 hit points 
there is player elimination in this game. If the dragon kills you, you are out. However, it seems to work in this game because soon as one person either escapes the dungeon or gets eliminated, it starts a five round timer. So you're never out more than five rounds. I think the player elimination works in this game and I like it in this game. So you're moving down the dungeon, you're trying to um, get an artifact that's lots of, worth lots of money. You're trying to use your deck to give you uh, gold, which you can use to buy items at the market, and there's straight up points at the end of the game. There's also monkey idols, which are just little five point things. You can veer off and grab some of those. And um, there's these secrets, little question marks. You can choose to take one of these. Most of them are good, like they can be healing potions or potions of swiftness, which can help you move through the dungeon a bit more. Some of them can hurt you, like, uh, um, well, there's one that gives you points and moves the dragon up. I don't know if any of them are really that bad for you. <clears throat> but the game was really easy to teach. I, it took me, what, five minutes to explain the concept before you, and then you picked it up and ran with it. We've played uh, three or four games now, and and they've all been pretty close. Like, none of them have been blowouts. I love how family-friendly this is. Mom loves playing this one, too. She really likes deck builders. Uh, the player elimination, if people are worried about that, then um, I would say that it's not really an issue in this game. You're not going to be sitting out for an hour waiting for the next game to start. No, if you, if you get killed or you escape, five rounds, 15 minutes usually at the most. And as soon as somebody is eliminated and that timer starts, the dragon starts getting more and more vicious. So there's a chance that people will join you in that player elimination as well. So the way the push your luck works in this is just say you run down into the dungeon, you grab one of the low point artifacts near the top and you escape. Anytime you escape with an artifact, you're gonna get a 20 point bonus. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna win because the last game we played, I did exactly that. I grabbed like a five point artifact near the top. I ran out, I got my 20 point bonus. Well, Hayden and Jess delved deeper into the dungeon. They had all kinds of cards worth points because some cards you buy will give you end game points. And they had you know the more expensive, deeper artifacts. None of them actually made it out. They both died before they escaped the, uh, the castle. If you get out of the bottom depths, you can still add up your score. You don't necessarily have to escape. You just have to get above ground, which is what happened. And I was the only one that escaped with my 20 points and I still ended up losing. I really like that balance where, you know, getting down fast and out quick isn't gonna guarantee you a win. What do you think about just the process of deck building? How you're basically customizing your own deck if you want to be more maneuverable and you're buying up more boots cards and stuff like that. Um, I haven't not played that much deck building. I really do like deck building because there are some cards that you do not know what to do with and some that you actually might have to do an instructed order to actually make them be good for you. Here's what I think about the game. I think it doesn't stay overstates welcome. It plays in half hour to 45 minutes. The theme is great. Walking through the, the dungeon, trying to sneak around, not make too much noise, or the dragon's going to attack you. The hit point system with the dragon is really fun. The choices that you make are important. It really makes you feel like you're doing more than just flopping your hand down and doing what it says on them. I really like that. It really stands out as a deck builder. In fact, this is probably my favorite deck builder. It kills trains for me and I'm no deck building aficionado. I haven't even played Dominion because, which is supposed to be the grandfather of deck builders. I, I heard trains was like Dominion with a board, so I just decided to get into trains. And I liked it fine. The theme though, um, meh, right? Train themes, doesn't do anything for me. But the game even, you, you even get 
a sense of story from these games. Like, for example, the last game we played, I'm trying to chase down this expensive artifact that he's near. He goes to the market, buys up both the master keys, so he's the only one that can cross locked doors. I couldn't do it, so I'm like, ah, I better <laughs> run back the other way and try and get some of these. So I ran back the other way, I grabbed a, um, you know, a low point artifact, stopped by the market, bought a backpack so that I can pick up another artifact, and barely made it out before the dragon killed me. The balance between, um, you know, the hit points and the, the time with the dragon really comes together good. It's a big thumbs up for me. I really like this clank. It's got the family weight entry level and it's got some uh, good decisions and depth. There's two sides of the board as well to vary it up a bit. Uh, one they recommend for starting. I like the second, the second, like the, the second side with um, with the bigger map, uh, but they're both fine. And I like the variety in the cards that you can buy. There's not a lot of repeat cards, which is cool. And it's a pretty good big deck. And uh, I'm still getting cards where I'm like, oh, that's cool and stuff like that. Sometimes a monster gets turned up and you can't buy them, but if you produce enough swords, you can get the, the benefit from them. Anything you want to add on your thoughts on this game, Hayden? Um, something else we forgot to mention is something about turn when you exit the castle. When it comes around to your turn, a dragon attack happens and you will have one die. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Once somebody escapes or dies, their meeple goes on to the, the timer track, basically. So instead, every time your turn comes around, instead of playing... The dragon automatically attacks and you end up bringing more cubes out. So as soon as someone leaves or dies, the intensity of the game builds up. Um, I think very highly of it. Hayden thinks highly of it. Um, it's really fun and it's going to get a lot of play over the years. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.